The next problem we need to solve is how do we hide our navigation buttons if, for example, we're at tile 1, we should only have the ability to move north or east. We should not have the south and west option. So we're going to have to create some code so that we can hide our buttons dynamically and we're going to figure out how to do that in code. So let's go back to our project and let's open up ccviewcontroller.m. And what we're going to do here is we're going to create two methods. The first method we're going to do is going to tell you if the button should be hidden or not. So we're going to basically do a test and it's going to return a bool value and we're going to call this method tile exists at point. Now we don't need to declare this in the header file since this is just a helper method but we should start organizing our methods. So let's go ahead and go down to the bottom here and I'm actually going to cut my update tile method. I'm going to move this down to the bottom here. And I'm also going to go ahead and create our new method, which is going to return a bool value. And this is going to be no, it should not be hidden. We'll return no from this method. Or yes, we should hide the button. So let's go ahead and give this method a name. We'll call this tile exists at point. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be testing a CG point. We're going to say if I subtract one from my y axis, does a tile exist? Uh, and if we're starting at tile 0, 0, the answer would be uh, no, the tile doesn't exist, so we should return yes, that we should hide this. I know it's uh, a little bit backwards, but the way the hidden property works for buttons that we're going to use in a minute is if we set the hidden property equal to yes, we actually hide the button. And if we set it equal to no, we do not hide the button, or we unhide the button if it's currently hidden. So we'll see how that works in just a minute. The argument we're going to pass in is a CG point, and we're going to give it a variable name point. I'm going to go ahead and add my curly braces. And right now we see this error, and it says control reaches end of non-void function. And what that's saying is you told me you were going to return a bool, and right now this method does not return anything at all. So we're going to have to make sure to remember to return either yes or no from this method. So we're going to write an if statement, and this if statement is going to be a little tricky initially, but we'll talk about how this works in just a minute. But let's go ahead and add it first. So we're going to say if point.y, and we're getting the variable name point here, so we know it's a CG point, and we know that CG points, we can use the dot notation to access its y, uh, vari or y value. In this case, it'll be a float. We have y comma x when we make CG points. So we're going to say if uh, point.y is greater than or equal to 0 and and point.x is greater than or equal to 0. And what this is going to allow us to do is it's going to basically say make sure that we're not in negative area, right? So we're not going below the x-axis and we're not going to the left of the y-axis. Um, and this way we make sure that we're in a, we're in a valid area uh, to begin with. Next we need to test to make sure we're not going above our valid or number of tiles that we have, uh, either to the top or to the right. So let's go ahead and add another double ampersand and we can say point dot x is less than self dot tiles and we can call the count method and what this is going to compare is is my current point dot x less than the number of arrays inside of my tiles array and we know that our current count of our tiles array is four because we have four arrays that contain the four columns which will make up our coordinate system and then each array contains three objects inside of it so hopefully what this alerts you to is we need to test if this row exists if we added one to our y point or our current point. So we're going to do a double ampersand again because we're going to add another test and we're going to say point dot y must be less than and we're going to do a double method call here so we're going to do or an embedded method call so two left brackets we're going to say self dot tiles object at index point dot x and we're gonna call the count method on this so what this is going to allow us to do and we can add our parentheses and our curly braces and what this is going to do is it's going to test and it's going to say in this row if I'm one point greater to the right of my current point 
does a tile exist in this spot? So if all these evaluate to true, and this is saying basically that the new point you passed in is a valid tile. So if it's valid, we don't want to hide the button, so we'll return no from this method. Otherwise, it's an invalid tile, or the point we're testing is invalid, so we want to do else, and we'll return yes, and what this will say is, yes, you should hide the button, because I don't want to be able to go to or try to navigate to this area because there will be no tile at that location. So the next thing we need to do is we need to use this method, tiles exist at point. And what we'll do is we'll create a method. So we can create a method actually above this. And just like we had an update tile button, we're going to create an update buttons method. So we can go ahead and add our curly braces. And what we're going to do is we're going to test all four of our buttons. Um, and what we're going to basically do is we're going to say self.westButton dot hidden and we're basically going to set this equal to well I know that I get a return value of yes or no for my method tiles exist at point and I can test the point so how would I test what test west well I would have to subtract one from my x axes so we know that our method tile exists at point returns a bool value which is yes or no and we have a hidden property here and if we set the hidden property equal to yes, it will hide the button on our screen. And if we set it equal to no, it will unhide it. Or if it's already unhidden, it'll do nothing. So we can say equals, and we'll call our method self tiles exist at point. We use the self keyword because tiles exist at point was defined inside of this class. And we'll say CG point make. And we have to create a new CG point in order to test based on our old CG point. So we'll see how we do this in just a second. We're going to say self.currentPoint.x. And we're going to subtract one because we're testing. If I subtract one, am I able to go west? Is, does this tile exist? So I can also do self.currentPoint.y. And I don't have to do anything to my current point dot y because I'm only testing the west tile first. Does a west tile exist? If it does, we're going to make sure that we're able to press the west button. And if it doesn't, we're going to hide it so that the user doesn't even have the ability to go to a tile that does not exist. So let's go ahead and our parentheses and our bracket and our semicolon. And we're going to have to go ahead and test the east, north, and south. So let's go ahead and test east. Self.eastButton.hidden is equal to self tiles exist at point. And we'll do CG point make. And in this case, we're testing E, so we're going to add one to the access. access. So we're going to say self.currentPoint.x plus one. And then I can also make my current point dot y. Since we're not testing the y-axis, we can leave that the same. And I can go ahead and line up my parentheses, uh, my bracket, and my semicolon. You saw there that sometimes when you add parentheses, the computer tries to add it for you. You want to make sure that you have one going each way. So I just had to remove it there to make this work. Um, next, let's test the north button. So we're going to do self.northButton.hidden is equal to self tiles exist at point. Tile exists at point. And we're going to say CG point make. Now, in this case, we're not testing the x axis anymore. So we can just do self.currentPoint.x. And we are going to be testing the y-axis, and we're going to be adding one since we're checking if a north tile exists. So we're going to do self.currentPoint.y plus 1. And I go ahead and close this out, left bra or right bracket and semicolon. And finally, we just need to test the south button. So we're going to say self.southButton.hidden, should I hide it? And we're going to say self tiles exist at point, tile exist at point, CG point make. And we're going to say self.currentPoint.x and self.currentPoint.y. And we're going to subtract one from the y. I'm going to add a little space here just so these line up a little bit nicer. And I'm going to go ahead and add a semicolon. The final thing we need to do is we need to actually call this update button, update buttons method. And we're going to do that in view did load since when our view initially loads, we start off at the 00, zero location. And we should only be able to go north and east. 
since we're at the lower left hand corner of our tile system. So let's go down here and we'll do self update buttons and I go ahead and close that out and add my semicolon. We also want to make sure we're adjusting our initial point to zero, 0. If you changed it in the last video to test that you could go to a different tile, make sure you're setting it back to zero, 0. As we're always going to start in the lower right left hand corner of our grid. And now if we go ahead and run our application, we should only see the north and east button. So we can only navigate to the north and the east. In the next video, we're going to have to figure out how to actually change the tiles when we press our navigation, but for now, we don't have the option to go west and south, which fits in with our grid system.